Welcome back, once again adventurers, to Let's Play Steinsgate. In the last episode, Mataro Okabe might finally manage to get his hands on Mo Kikiryu's phone, and had Kurisu on standby for the, with the phone wave TBA. Unfortunately, uh, Mataro sent several D-mails trying to urge past Moaka not to change her phone. Unfortunately, the, also unfortunately, these um, d emails didn't seem to work. For the sole reason that Moaka Kiryu never changed her Gaudi purple phone to begin with, it's still the same. Which basically means that um, she showed us one message and sent a completely different message, most certainly related to the IBM 5100, possibly letting FB know of its location. Unfortunately, uh, Kiryu, Moka Kiryu is unfortunately a uh, rather crazed, nervous wreck at the moment, who is, about, who is out for our blood. My teeth are chattering. This is pathetic. The insane mad scientist, Hoewin Kiyoma, out crazy by a maniacal woman? What madness. I thought I'd won when I'd snatched her phone. Unfortunately, this world line is still playing its cruel joke on us. But now my advantage is gone. We should probably shut the phone wave TBA off for the time being because um, it's a no go. <laughs> And with uh, Mr. Braun probably in the same state as Mo Kikiryu, we're probably out of options at this point. But we're fine for the moment. Basically means we fucked up. She's truly deserving of the moniker Shining Finger, and I know I said I would never utter that again, but it had to be said. That's correct, since it's, it shouldn't be in her ascent history, but it should be in her arrival history if, if that's the case. It's basically the way the D-mails work. I glare at the purple phone in my hand. It's a good thing Marika didn't change phones. Now I know exactly where the D-mail went. Also, it's uh, rather a shame that this isn't Mirai Niki, or Future Diary, because we could break Moroka's phone right now, and she would uh, disappear into time. Who Unfortunately, this is Steinsgate, not Mirai Niki. Probably should have done that to begin with, otherwise we probably wouldn't be in this situation. For a second there, I thought it would have been easy. We should have known better. Indeed, we should have. Moka is not a casual phone user. Her mailbox literally has hundreds of entries over the la last week, almost all from FB. Some of my mails are sprinkled in here and there. I don't have time to search through each of these mails, even just the subject lines. Not to mention the pounding on the door is freaking me out. Christina. Probably the neighbor too. I hang up. Well, looks like we're about to take responsibility for our actions in a completely new way. The lady next door comes out again, alarmed by the escalating noise. Hopefully, the police show up and uh, she's the one who gets arrested. She glares at me. Although, we seem to be the ones in a bit of a trouble. But when she, when she sees the magnitude of the door's damage, the lady opens her eyes in shock and runs back inside. 
I'm not leaning against the door anymore. Moka could just open it, but she hasn't realized that. She's so fixated on getting her phone back, she'd destroy her own door. In any case, I don't have time to check her mail history. I put the phones in my pocket and moved to the side of the door. Time for a completely different tactic, methinks. I carefully grip the doorknob and wait for the interval between bangs. Three, two, one, now. I yank the door open. A coffee table flies out and smashes into the walkway rail. Look at me! Her screech raises hairs all over my body. She's standing in the entrance like a revenant of the gates of hell. I step back. My knees tremble. But then I remember what I'm here to do. I gather my resolve, enter the room, and close the door behind me. Or at least I try. The door is bent and won't fully close. I give up unlocking it, probably for the best. Mocha glares at me, shaking with fury. I believe the saying is, uh, payback's a bitch, Moroka Kiryu. First I have to restrain her again. This is a woman who would kill on command, who would break her own door down just to retrieve her phone. It's too dangerous to let her be. I'm stronger. I just need to get her on the ground. That's if she doesn't pull her weapon on us first. There's no time. It's now or never. Crushing my fear, I charge at Moika at full speed. Our bodies collide. Moika tries to twist away, but I grab her clothes and use her, my momentum to push her to the floor. <laughs> so far, so good. The back of her head hits the floor. Her resistance weakens. Hopefully she has a bit of a concussion. She doesn't know how to break a fall. Some secret agent. Well, in reality, Shmo Kikiryu is nothing more than a tool. A tool that has outlived her usefulness and is now being disposed has been disposed of by Sir. I quickly straddle her waist. Now she's mine. We need to interrogate her, unfortunately, not kill her. <laughs> Moka flails her arms and legs wildly. I should have known she wouldn't give up this easily. Her fist strikes my jaw. Fortunately, Moka is weak. The blow does little damage. I still need to stop her from struggling. First her hands. I start with her left. I grab her wrist and pin her to the floor. Too bad we don't have anything to bind her hands with. A fist flies towards my face. It pops against my left eye, blanking my vision for a second. She seems to stop struggling for a moment. That's probably our window of opportunity. Her hand claws weakly at the air. But it turns out she was reaching for my hair. She grabs it hard. I feel several strands tear free of my scalp. <coughs> that was uncalled for. I get a grip on Moka's face and press her hand head against the floor, not hand. She tries to bite my fingers, so I pull my hand back. I grab the hand that's grabbing my hair and dig my nails into her wrist. Hopefully the neighbor is calling the cops right now, although that would actually be bad for us in, in this situation. She still doesn't let go of my hair. We'll need her to talk about the D-mail and FB at some point. All the while her feet are pounding against my back. She's also trying to free her left hand. 
unfortunately I can't take much more of this. Our endurance is uh, pretty feeble, if I do say so myself. I instinctively hit but Moaka with all my strength. Now we're even. The sickening sound of bone against bone echoes inside my head. The impact makes me dizzy too, but I fight it. Moka goes limp. An opening, finally, I succeed at pinning both her hands down. Her glasses fell off at some point during the struggle, possibly due to the headbutt. Her red, swollen eyes give me an even more demented look. There's an angry bump on her forehead where I headbutted her. It's time to end this dance. She spits at me. A lukewarm saliva hits my face. Looks like she's still not in a cooperative mood. I want to wipe it off, but my hands are full. Moka glares at me. There were tears in her eyes. Perhaps from the pain. Of course, we are actually now in a position to actually start laying out some demands of our own. Moka breaks on, on eye contact when I mention it. She stares at my pocket. She must have caught a glimpse of purple. I smiled scornfully. Indeed, especially after what you've pulled. Unfortunately, we can't do that. I'll need it to secure her cooperation. Mocha tries again to free her hands. I lean in harder to keep them pinned. My strength and position are superior, so Mocha accomplishes nothing. Probably should give a little bit of psychological warfare here and uh, let her know that we know that she's a stern rounder. She'll probably, um, she'll probably react accordingly. Next, she struggles to free her body. Same result. I clamp my thighs firm, firmly around her hips and hold her down. She occasionally knees me in the back, but I can bear that pain. It's not enough to make me forfeit this round. Which one of us, indeed? Moika, without a doubt. I don't do sports or anything, so I'm not that strong. But I'm on top. I don't need to expend much en energy to keep her pinned. <laughs> because of your involvement with CERN, and because we need to cancel whatever D-mail that you sent, back into the past. <laughs> Actually, problem not probably not a good idea to let her do that, Rintaro. The neighbor's still next door. She can scream and spit all she likes. Nothing will make me give up this position. Being arrested by a passing cop Probably will, however. We should probably actually have mentioned the fact that we know about FB. Not their identity, but um Moka shakes her head violently. She's just wasting her energy. 
I maintain position and stare down at Morika. Now the time has finally come to get inside Moroka Kiryu's head. お前が眉毛を殺した事実は俺の中に刻まれてるんだよ。今日はお前を逃がさないからな。きっちり向き合ってやる。Until now, I've always run away from facing Moroka. But I can't do that on this world line. I have to know what her D-Mail said. <laughs> Time to tell her what we know. Moroka is still struggling. You're just an anti-social phone junkie, Moroka Kiryu. Sadly, the perfect trained dog for someone like CERN, an FB. Unfortunately for Moroka, her current threats in this world line are nothing compared to the pain and suffering that Rintaro Ogabe has suffered throughout the world lines that have now been undone. I think that Moroka Kiryu is no match for Hoenn Kiyoma. This woman's out of control. Does she want another headbutt that badly? Ah uh, yeah, the neighbor. A knock sounds on the door. Moroka and I both look at the door in surprise. And some... Um, oh well, I would say that our advantage is gone. Yeah, that's not good for us. I didn't think about that. You probably should have. I can't have her calling the police. Well, now we're. Well, now. Now we're at a disadvantage. Moka suddenly starts screaming. Now, I need to silence Moroka somehow, but I can't use either hand. There's only one way. I suddenly press my lips against Moroka's. Well, that's one way of silencing her, I suppose. My loveless kiss shuts her up quite effectively. I lock eyes with her as well, trading glares in silence. I finally hear the neighbor's footsteps recede. What a relief. Unfortunately, uh, we're still at a bit of a disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that, Moroka. I feel a sharp pain on my lip. 
I instinctively jerk away. Blood drips from my mouth and lands on Moka's neck. She bit me. When I feel around my lip with the tip of my tongue, I the taste of blood spreads out from the laceration. Moka breathes wildly as she glares at me with tearful eyes. <laughs> She grimaces and looks away. Her pink lips glisten with saliva. I might find the sight alluring if the situation were different. Moga turns her face to where it looks up through the open curtains at the bright full moon outside the window. How much time has passed? It feels like it's already been dozens of hours. But it's still night outside, so it probably hasn't been more than one or two hours. And we're still here. Mocha still hasn't said a word since I kissed her. She hasn't tried to escape either. Her expression is blank. She's just staring off to the side. What is she looking at? I follow her gaze, but the only thing there is a half-empty bottle of water. Has she given up? Either way, I can't let my guard down. Maybe it's the stress, but it feels like my body is going numb. And I've been drenched in sweat for a while now. This room has no air conditioning whatsoever. The heat is starting to get to me. I thought I held an overwhelming advantage in this position, but it's harder to maintain than I expected. Not only do I have to keep Moga pinned, I also have to keep a close eye on her so she doesn't try anything, which is easier said than done. All Moga has to do is lie there. She can rest and try again whenever she's ready. Will this last all night? At this rate, my strength might give out first. Fear mounts. If she escapes, she's going to try to kill me. She must have a gun somewhere, I'm sure of it. I consider calling Kurisu for help, but I can't use either hand, and I don't know what time it is. It's almost like I'm the one who's trapped in this situation. But we have to stay positive. You can do this. Mocha's dependent on her phone. When that's her weak point. If I keep her separated from her phone, then sooner or later her will to resist should collapse. It's a matter of whose strength will fail first. That is a question I shall leave to the next episode of Let's Play Steinsgate. So when we return adventurers, we shall see whether Mocha Kiryu or Hoin Kiyoma has the greater endurance. As always, until next we meet.